everyone, it's Lisa Joy Young and welcome to a Friday's Favorites or Flops. So I'm going to start doing more of these. I'm going to be talking about products relating to face and body art all the way to beauty makeup, even art supplies, things like that. And I'm just, whenever I get a good group of products that I really like or don't like, I'm going to be giving honest reviews of them. So if you're thinking of purchasing something, it'll give you a better idea of if it's a good purchase or maybe something you should stay away from. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna be talking about is this bad boy, and this is called the Makeup Eraser. And basically, the concept behind it is that you don't need facial cleanser, you just use water and this cloth to take off all your makeup naturally and gently with no harsh chemicals or anything like that. And I'm gonna be trying it with face and body makeup too. So I haven't used it for face and body makeup, so I don't know how it's gonna work. We're gonna be doing it together for the first time, uh, but I have used it for my makeup. So it works really well, I'll be honest. I was surprised. It did take off all my makeup, and I used a toner afterwards just to make sure there was no residual left, and there wasn't. So that was really cool. If I'm feeling lazy and don't wanna get my whole face all suds up, this is a great thing to just quickly wipe down. The con of it though is to get your eye makeup off, like all of your mascara, you kind of have to tug a lot and I don't like doing that. So what I like to use this for mostly is like I said on a lazy night just to take off my face makeup and most of my eye makeup. I don't try to get it all off. Um, but this is actually really good for, um, you know when you wash your face with cleanser and you have like just a little bit of mascara or eyeliner kind of smudged still? I used to buy makeup remover pads to get that the rest of that off. And you know, they're, you have to use one every day and they're like $10 a jar. Well with this, this is perfect for that. I just use this quick wipe and it gets everything off just as good as an oily makeup remover. I have no oily residue and I don't have to buy those anymore. So for that purpose alone, I think this thing is worth it because it'll pay for itself within you know a month or so. So I really like this. Now let's do an experiment together and see how well it works with taking off face and body makeup. Because if you're anything like me and you paint your kid's face or you paint your own face, it's not that easy to remove, let's be honest. So if this can do a good job, this might be a lifesaver, so let's see. And then the damp makeup eraser. Let's see which one wins. Okay, so I have my wipe. I'm gonna do this on the bottom half, so I'm just gonna do one wipe. Now I did two colors, as you can see, that are very strong and the hardest, in my opinion, to remove. So I got teal, which is notorious for being difficult to remove, and then this really deep burgundy color. So I'm just gonna go a couple wipes with this. So it gets most of it off, but it does leave the stains there. It got pretty much all of the burgundy off, so that's good but the teal is still there. Okay, so there is the wet wipe. Now I would usually go in with facial cleanser and a scrub brush, brush like I said, to get rid of that staining. Let's see if this is any different or if it's the same effect. Okay. Looks like it's the same. Maybe even the wet wipe took off a little more of that burgundy color, so. Yeah, uh, well, you know, it's weird. It's taking off more of the teal. So it took off more of the teal, more of the teal, a little less of the burgundy. So I would say it's an even wash, honestly. Um, between the wet wipe. So yeah, this is kind of a tie, uh, but for quick makeup removal, this is really nice if you wanna pick that up. All right, so for my next favorite, I'm gonna preface it with my flop because they kind of have something to do with each other. But as you know, as a face and body artist, artist it's extremely important to practice because um, our strokes and brushwork, it takes a lot of practice. So when I was learning, I always practiced on my own face 
and that in itself has cons because it's hard to paint on yourself, let's be honest, especially for if you wear glasses. And also it takes longer to paint on yourself and then you're having to scrub your face all the time and it's just not good for your skin. So, uh, when I first started face painting, I bought myself this beauty, dun dun dun, <laughs> to practice on. <laughs> this thing is creepy, let's be honest, it is creepy. Um, and it's only half the head. But the pros of this, it's a contoured, lifelike, shape and size face. So you can really know in a three-dimensional sense what your design's gonna look like. The pros end there when we're talking about practice heads. They're hard and awkward to hold, number one. Um, number two, there's um, no definite hairline. So you might, like when I designed this, I wasn't thinking about the hairline and then when I went to do it on myself, I was like, oh shoot, that doesn't work. Number three, the texture of all of these kind of practice skins, practice heads, it's not like regular skin. And it um, pulls and tugs on the brush. So no matter how good you are at teardrops, the teardrops usually don't look good on this. They look feathered and bad and the line work looks messy and I'm just not a big fan. And then to up the creepiness factor, the skin peels off to reveal another creepy head below. <laughs> and I'm a little afraid if any guests find this in my house, they might think I'm a serial killer. I don't know. So yeah, not a big fan of the practice head. This is my flop. So when I got uh, a message from Sally Ann Lynch for uh, me to demo her new product, I was very excited because it is an answer to my practice and design problems, which is this practice page. Now, when you get it, I still have to train mine. I played with it a little bit, but it still bends. So that's the one thing about it you have to keep in mind. You're gonna have to train it to stay straight. Put books on it or tape it down, so keep that in mind. But here's what it looks like. It's made of this semi-transparent plastic, which is really cool that she thought to make it transparent because if you're practicing a design and you're having a hard time getting the shape, you can print it out, put it under here, and just kind of trace over it so that you can train your hand to make that movement, to make that motion, and to really get it into your um, memory. Also, she drew a hairline on, yay! So now we have realistic boundaries for where the face painting should go. Number three, it's not creepy. People will not think you're a serial killer. Number four, it's way easier to wash. You just take um, water, a cloth, you can even put cleaning solution on this thing and get all of your painting stains off of it. So much easier to clean. That way you don't have, you know, previous designs wrecking your creative process when you're trying to think of whatever designs you're painting. So yeah, I'm a really big fan of this. It's super cool and I'm excited to design more future designs for videos on it. All right, the next favorite is Monster Pasties. There you go. And these are amazing. I cannot say enough good things about this product. The only downside is that they're a little expensive, but they are worth it. If you have a body painting where that person is gonna be walking an event or people will be seeing them live, this is a must because you don't have Photoshop in real life. And with these, you don't need Photoshop. Nothing ruins a body painting more than puckering, cheap, horrible pasties. They totally stand out and it's all you can look at. But these go on completely smooth. You can't see a seam, you can't see anything. They're, they're completely invisible underneath your body painting. Not only that, they're really easy to put on. I was surprised. Um, I bought them to do a body paint for a Halloween costume for a client of mine. And I was really worried because I'd never used these and I was a bit nervous about applying them for the first time on a client and I did it and no, it was like applying a temporary tattoo. Super duper easy. Um, here's what, they come in packages like this and I'll put a link for an application video that Silly Farm put out. It's a really good video 
It'll show you how easy it is, but I'm very happy with this product and I think that Monster, uh, Monster Paste did a great, great job with these. So these get a thumbs up. So my next favorite is an actual face paint and this is the Kryolan White Aqua Color. So it looks like this and I bought way more than I needed. Okay, I used this for an all day Sugar Skull event and there is like not a dent in it. So I think this is gonna last me for life. I bought way too much, but it lasts a long time. And what I love using this for is for soft, even white bases. And then you use it along with the Kabuki brush. So this is the Coastal Sense Pink Kabuki brush. Um, I got this tip from Miss Shauna Del Real. She's amazing at sugar schools, as you know. And I was working at her event and she said, okay, you gotta get this stuff if you want your sugar schools to look good. And she was right. I've never had an easier time putting on a flawless white base. So this is a must if you want to be able to have easily blendable, nice white bases. So I hope that you guys liked this. I hope that it helped you and I will see you soon in another Friday favorites or flops.